Hi, I am Nina Podolska. During this series, I've been very fortunate to meet and speak to the most influential and successful women around the world, women who have made a difference. And today I'm very lucky to have a sit down with a phenomenal actress, model, and a trailblazer, and my dear friend, Olga Kurlenko. When you think about your childhood, what are the most vivid memories that come to mind? I guess the most vivid memory is all of us um, spending time on the beach in the summer. Um, I was born in a small town uh, by the sea, as of sea. The town is called Berdyansk. It's a summer town. In summer, it has tons of people. It's alive. The cafes are buzzing. And, you know, the business is going. During the winter, it's very quiet and uh, there's not much to do. It's one of those, you know, seaside towns. And uh, of course, summer was my favorite season. And we would go, um, we would spend, I would spend time on the beach every day, practically. I loved swimming. I would swim till my lips turned purple. And the it was mother impossible. couldn't get you out of the water. Yeah, it was impossible to get me out of the water. Um, and uh, I particularly remember eating uh, corn because that's our thing, we all eat corn. I had a friend who was good at acrobatics and I would try to do somersaults. Can you still do them now? Uh, I still can't do them. <laughs> but there is a video of me. My mother had the, a Super 8 video camera and she shot a lot those days. We have all that film right now. Of course, they were all, all silent, uh, but those were great, they're great mo memories. And I actually have that footage of me trying to copy her and do the somersault. And, and, and it's just, uh, it's hilarious because I'm really little and she's a little older than me. Um, and I get really jealous that she can do all that stuff and not me. <laughs> it's just really, uh, really funny. But yeah, they're great. To, I actually have all that footage, me running into the sea, eating, uh, you know, playing, crying, uh, all of that, it's great. Didn't you tell me before that you were a dancer growing up? I danced, yeah, so later my mom saw how keen I was on moving and doing something spectacular. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she, uh, and my mother is a, is a dancer, she always danced. Uh, she dreamt to be a ballerina. Mm -hmm. And that happened because her mother didn't let her go oh. to, uh, Moscow or St. Petersburg, both were very far from where they lived, so that it was a no to study. Uh, so she never became a ballerina. Um, and she wanted me to become one. So uh, I started dancing, doing ballet at a very early age. I think I was five. Five? Yeah, I was good. I was one of the best, but as a kid, I was a child. and. That didn't last very long, unfortunately, because I um, had an accident around, I think I was 12, got hit by a car, and that was over. What? <laughs> Just before I got hit by a car, I was already dancing on point, and uh, then after that, my leg was broken, so it took me a while to recover, and when I came back, I felt that I was very different. I had lost a lot, and it discouraged me once a ballerina, always a ballerina. I know you still have it, right? Yeah, you know, I have a certain, of course, it all stayed with me. I still danced after the, I wasn't gonna go professional or anything because that was, uh, I, uh, I used to be able to do a split. I haven't practiced in a long time, so I can't anymore. I didn't get to travel much while growing up in the Ukraine, but the few trips I did take were very important to me. What would those trips be for you? Uh, the only, trips that I had during my childhood were two trips. And the first one was to St. Petersburg and the second one was to Moscow. The Moscow has to be the most memorable because uh, that trip turned my whole life upside down. It was like traveling into the future. And it's funny, at that point, it seemed like traveling yeah. into the future because I came from such a small town and I hadn't seen anything. Now. To think that I have to go probably to another planet. <laughs> yeah. I guess 
Japan makes me feel like I'm traveling into the future. It was our last day, we were in the subway going home to pick up our suitcases to leave and uh, a woman uh, stopped us in the subway and uh, she, said, she said she was a scout for a modeling agency and she suggested that I could maybe, maybe try modeling. We didn't really know what modeling was and it was very far. I mean, we've seen it on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I mean, that was kind of a, um, a fairy tale world for me. It was unattainable. Uh, but of course, because it's unattainable, it hits you right in the head and you think, oh my God, of course, I'd, I'd like to participate. It totally got into me and I thought, well, I'd love it. I'd love it. Um, it was, I just couldn't believe it happened. My mother's mother, my grandmother, did not let her go to Moscow, St. Petersburg, <clears throat> um, because she was worried of what could happen to her daughter. She was sure she could have done something extraordinary with her life. And she said that because her mother didn't do it, she had no chance. She took that chance away from her, which is maybe it's good that it happened because that's why my mother let me go. She said, you're gonna go try, do it. I'm very grateful to her that she let me go and, and she trusted me and she gave me quite a particular education, I guess, when I was a kid, I was, uh, I wasn't let to do whatever I wanted. I was either Caring. home or at school. There's nothing else. <laughs> or at dance or at theater or at uh, my drawing class, or there's another thing, a piano, a music school. And that's a, a lot. <laughs> I had no free time. I had no time left to play with friends. I guess at least, she knew that I wasn't going to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah. But I was always studying, learning to dance, learning to draw, learning to play piano, learning to God knows what. What was it like growing up in the Ukraine for you? And what had an impact on the person that you are today? You know, when you grow up in a small town and you don't see too many opportunities and it uh, definitely gives you motivation to try and have a better life, maybe. That means um, a life where you have access to interesting places, which is very hard to find in a small town. You're motivated to learn about the world. You're also motivated to uh, have more means because it's hard to live when you don't have enough and you can't afford winter shoes. So that was my motivation. I didn't have that and I wanted to have that, if possible. I, I saw other kids that had that, and I thought, why can't I? Well, I know some people who, when they don't have much, they their spirit is broken and they give up, yeah. while others use it as a motivation to succeed. Clearly, you used it to fuel your ambitions. Okay, I guess I'm ambitious, and uh, but to me, it's a normal uh, desire. I mean, it's also that I had the opportunity to try, but me having left, um, Ukraine and uh, having moved to Paris at around 16, I saw the world that was opening in front of me. I saw the culture and the opportunities. If you try hard, if you work, it's complete. It's a completely different system. It's a completely different structure. I know girls that, um, actually most of the girls that came at the same time from Ukraine and Russia with me, uh, not most of them, all of them, actually, I don't know one who did not get married <laughs> and um, or just left and dropped out. Mm -hmm. They all got married and stopped very quickly. I'm the only one who's still working. I could have gotten married and dropped too, but I didn't want to. It was my career was important. I mean, apart from the marriages that I had, it, it was there were completely different reasons. Uh, and um, I mean, if anything, unfortunately, I had to support my husbands, but which is why, in the end. <laughs> Uh, it didn't work out. I wanted to do something with my life and uh, I never missed a meeting or a casting. It's the hardest thing ever. <laughs> when no one cares about you, you just come there, you're just a face of 300. I couldn't do it now. But because I did that, I'm here today. There are stages you have to go through. <clears throat> you start with nothing, you start as nobody 
and then you move, but you have to persevere. There's no way you can stop or miss something or drop out or, you know, hang out with wrong people. It just, it won't work. So I was quite lonely. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't hang out with friends. I cried a lot, but I still would, I would cry and then I, it would pass and then I would get up and keep going. <laughs> I don't know. When you think about the Ukraine, the place where you grew up, what are the first things that come to mind? You know, everything that's very quite traditional and national, maybe, you know, uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian national dances and songs, something that really is particular to only Ukraine. It's always bright colors. When you were growing up, many dramatic things have happened in the Ukraine, like Chernobyl or the collapse of the Soviet Union. Do you remember any of these? And if you do, how did they affect you? I remember Chernobyl. I remember the collapse of Soviet Union. I was a kid, I was very young when that happened. I couldn't really understand what was happening. I just remember that my grandmother didn't let me walk uh, or play under the rain anymore, which I loved as a kid. You know, being wet and playing in the, in the mud, of course, we're all like that. That was not allowed because she said that if the rain was to hit my hair, I was gonna go bald. <laughs> so that was a very good thing to say to a kid that freaked me out. There was no way <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna get out on the street. Um, and the other thing, I remember us um, uh, taking all the skin off vegetables and fruits, so peeling all of them. It was considered radiation, so, and we would boil things more or longer. So these are the most like vivid memories yeah. of a kid. I was a pioneer at the time uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed. So suddenly the red scarves weren't needed anymore. And they said, tomorrow you can wear whatever you want. I remember that one, the next morning, uh, one of our students, one of the kids made a joke about that. And that was the next morning. We were not in the Soviet Union anymore. Um, made a joke that, oh, how good it is that I don't have to wear a red color or something but they referred to it like a dog color or something. And that, that girl was sent back home. She was punished and she said, you have to leave the class right now. Wow. <laughs> because of course you don't change overnight. I mean, every, it, was, it was still the Soviet Union. Yeah. The mentality was the Soviet Union. I remember that drama in the class. There was a big fight and uh, lots of tears and people were kicked out because they were not to make jokes about mm -hmm. what, was it, what it was before. When you say you're from the Ukraine, do people even know where that is? Sometimes people didn't even know what, <laughs> what exactly that was. It depends. Oh, and they, they would think, oh, so you're Russian, which, yeah. you know, okay, it's close but different. I often had people, especially the, if they were men, trying to flirt with me, which uh, drove me completely nuts. <laughs> and that was the best thing to made me, make me angry. What are some of the things that make Ukrainian women special? I think our girls are pretty good looking. I think women from Ukraine who grew up there have not seen a very easy life, which makes people that had difficulties growing up or living their life with difficulties have always much more resilience than others. Would you say that you're sensitive? Yeah, I'm very sensitive. Yeah, definitely. Too sensitive, I think. Unfortunately, <laughs> maybe fortunately. I don't know if it's good or bad. It's both, depending on the moment. <laughs> Who inspires Olga Kurilenko? People? Historical figures, maybe? There's especially this woman, a writer and philosopher, a French writer and philosopher, who inspired me a lot and who I read a lot of at a certain time of my life. I lived in France then um, and she still inspires me. Her name is Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, she was the partner of uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and uh, I, I really love the way she thinks, things she believes in, what she defends. What do you dream about and what are you looking forward to in the future? I think I've achieved a lot that I dreamt about, but uh, so there's no more of certain precision, like what I really 
would like is just to be happy and um, and uh, be surrounded by people I love and and of course career wise I'd love to keep going and doing interesting projects and the more interesting they are the better I want to do different things I want to try something new but I always have to have a project I always have a project even if it's not a project that's connected to the cinema. I also have some pro personal projects. They're either houses, you know, like uh, homes that I buy. You've done so many different types of roles. Which one can you relate to the most? There were two roles that I can relate to the most. My first film, the very, very first film that I did, uh, which was a French-speaking movie. The movie is called uh, The Ring Finger. That girl has a lot from me, and I really felt her and related to her a lot. And it's great that it was my first movie because it was a great role to start with. The other role that I think I, I'm very similar to is Vera in Magic City. Um, and it's funny because Iris and Vera are completely different people, but yet in both of them I find things that uh, are very similar to me. There is a little girl somewhere out there watching this right now. What advice would you give her about her life and her dreams? I would say, um, to a little girl, I would say, um, whatever you dream of, uh, don't step away from it. I'd say pursue your dream. Uh, believe in yourself, even if no one else does. That doesn't mean um, thinking too highly of yourself. These are completely different things. You have to just know uh, that you have strength to go through obstacles on the way I think it's good to dream and I think it's good to pursue your goals. Um, people should be brave. I'd say be brave, don't be afraid. I think don't be afraid to fail. I think it's much more frightening and sad to be passive than to fail. I'm much more scared of passivity um, than of failing. I think that's much more scary. <laughs> of sitting and doing nothing and never trying. That's very sad and frightening. Olga, thank you so much for sharing your story with me today. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more stories of inspiring women from around the world. До свидания and goodbye.